Okay, so we're going to listen to Reggie Holmes. He's the owner and creative director of Enthuse Creative LLC, a branding and design firm based in Tyson's Corners. He's been in business since 2013, and Enthuse Creative is a strategic creative partner for businesses and organizations specializing in brand focused strategy consulting, brand design, and brand management. Over the years, Enthuse Creative has helped dozens of companies and groups across the industries to establish, deploy, and enhance successful brands through the use of strategy, design, and creativity. With a background in graphic design, Mr. Holmes combines artistic ability with a strategic, thoughtful mind to approach complex problems in innovative ways and deliver impactful solutions. So without further ado, Mr. Holmes, you have the screen. All right, one moment. Sorry about that, jumped the gun a little bit. You're good. All right, um, let's go full screen. Great, uh, so yes, um, good morning everybody. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, enhancing and expanding your digital brand. So I'm, I'm really grateful to be able to be with you today. Um, <clears throat> You know, when I think about, oh, one second. Can, I, can anyone see the, um, do you see the slideshow? Yes, enhance, expand digital brand, not in full screen. It's still in your. Uh, okay. One second. Multiple screens here. Hang on a second. Let's try this again. My apologies. Okay. There you go. Okay. Everybody see the cover? Yep. Okay, excellent. All right, so, um, Expanding and enhancing, uh, or enhancing and expanding your digital brand. So, um, you know, where we are right now, uh, and, and just to answer the question, um, for me, I would say that I, uh, I have probably received the same amount of emails, um, maybe more, uh, over the past four months, but I definitely feel like I read a lot more of the emails that I get. Um, and similar to Melody, I have spent a lot of time, um, you know, you get offers for people to uh, sign up for, for different guides and um, reports that they put out. I think I've, I've definitely spent a lot more time uh, looking for those types of resources and also actually downloading and, uh, and starting to read those resources. So, um, you know, continuing to get a lot of emails, uh, but, but I, I definitely think that with the, the additional time um, that we have from not going from place to place. I spend more time actually actually reading those emails. Um, so I don't know if others can say the same, but uh, where we are now, uh, and you'll notice throughout this, I'm, I'm, I use a lot of uh, sports analogies because I'm, I'm a big sports fan and the absence of sports is, is painful for me. So um, I want everybody to be safe, but I do, I do love my sports and hope they can return soon. So, um, so think about this guy, he's in a boxing match and, you know, he's just gone through uh, four rounds, you know, and, and maybe we feel like we've been through a few rounds in the boxing ring over the past few months. Uh, you know, it's been difficult. It's been challenging for everybody in every industry. Uh, and so, you know, we, uh, he at this point has a, ch a, a, a choice, you know, whether to, to go back out and continue to fight or to just kind of stay in the corner. Um, and so, you know, we, we've kind of gone from asking what now to uh, what's next. And so that's sort of where we are four months into this thing um, with no immediate sight in it, uh, with no immediate end in sight, but we all, uh, you know, have choices to make to decide uh, whether we're going to keep coming back out to, to fight for the next round. So as we think about our businesses, uh, I, I want us to think about this as we sort of talk about uh, our digital brands. Uh, so our objective today is to really understand um, what digital brands uh, and branding is, 
and then talk through some approaches and actions that we can take to um, not only grow our digital brands, but also um, grow how it can help us, you know, grow our business. So uh, your brand is in many ways your most valuable asset. So um, we want to, to leverage that to see our, our businesses grow. And um, why is that important? Uh, there's a lot more people online as uh, I was sort of trying to get at with the question that there's, there's more of us spending more time online doing more things. And, you know, the things that are kind of listed there on the right, those are, are just some of the activities that we're all doing online. But, um, you know, this 10.2 uh, percent increase, that's, that's over, um, you know, according to, to one company statistics from January and February. So, you know, this is, is a mid June statistic. So there's 10.2% more people online doing these activities in June than January, February before uh, the pandemic situation. So um, that's not a huge number. It was closer to 50 to 70% in March when everything sort of shut down all at once. As things are starting to reopen, there's, there's less activity, but it's still a lot more even then at the beginning of 2020. And if you think about June being, you know, sort of peak summer, you know, kids would typically be out of school, camps and things like that are happening. To have that many more people online means that there are uh, a lot of people that are potential um, folks for, for your brand to uh, engage with. So, so basically, even though there are obstacles that this situation has brought us, there are a lot of opportunities that are, are presented uh, because of the primarily digital landscape that we're in. And so I'm not much of a, a math guy, I'm an artist, but I have this little equation that I think is really helpful for us to sort of think about, you know, why all this is important. And it's, you know, visible plus viable equals value, valuable. Um, and so visible is all about showing who you are. Um, viable is all about showing that you can do the job. And valuable, um, is all about showing that you're the right person for the job. So as you show who you are through your digital brand, uh, as you demonstrate your viability through your digital brand, uh, that will make you valuable and more and more people will see that you're the right person to solve their problem. So to define, this is my definition of digital brand, is uh, communicating your business uh, or individual uh, unique value. Uh, through digital channels and digital tools. So, um, you know, it's really important. Uh, what, what, I, what I like to, you know, say is, is it's your, your what, your why, and your how. Not, not just what you do, um, but, you know, why you do it. What's your purpose and how you do it. How do you differentiate? How do you do it differently or better uh, than others in your space. And then uh, when we think about digital branding, that's really the, the, the process of le leveraging all the digital channels and tools that are out there to ensure that your business is known, understood, and valued. And that's important because all those words are relationship words. And as we think about digital brand and branding, uh, I, I want us to continually think about relationships. Um, people have relationships with businesses. And branding is a process by uh, people are introduced to your business. And then also uh, as they start that relationship, that relationship is grown and solidified. So um, talk about branding. Um, we're not just talking about visual things or we're not just even talking about messaging and taglines and slogans. Um, we're really talking about the whole picture of creating that relationship between a business entity and a person or a group of people. So, um, and it's all using all these different vehicles uh, to do it. And I'm sure there are others, if you want, you can add them to the chat. Uh, but a lot of these things were mentioned um, as we sort of went through um, people's answers to the question, but um, there are a number of different tools that are available and new ones are being um, created every day as people realize that where we are now is we're, we're, we're gonna not necessarily stay exactly in this space, but uh, people using Zoom, people 
relying on social media to get their business message out. Like that's not going away. Um, the need for people to be able to search uh, online and find you, um, find out quickly relevant information about your business, that's not going away. And maybe they don't search uh, by sitting in front of a computer, maybe they use their phone, maybe their smart device. So um, all of these things are, are tools that are gonna be important for getting your digital brand out there. Um, so this is Dodger Stadium in uh, Los Angeles. And this is one of my uh, analogies. So, you know, the digital tools are, are, are great because they're designed to work on your behalf when you're not able to be at work. Each of us has a limited capacity um, to, to work within a given, you know, 24 hour period. But if we leverage these tools correctly, they're always working for us because people are always online doing all those different activities that we talked about, you know? And so think about this, this baseball field. Um, you know, there's a space here to play the game of baseball, but let's say that the grass was not cut. Uh, let's say that the, the field and the, the lines uh, on the field, the base pass, let's say it, it wasn't, you know, properly outlined and clear where the outfield is and the infield is. You couldn't actually play baseball. And so um, it's not enough to just, you know, have a website, have social media. It's actually got to be, things have to be outlined and set up uh, in order for them to work properly. Um, so, you know, it's, it's important that we spend some time thinking strategically about, you know, how these tools actually um, are going to be best used to communicate our brand message uh, and keep our digital brand out there. Uh, and also, um, you know, weightlifting is sort of a good example. We don't have a lot of time to really talk about the difference between digital brand and digital marketing. Um, but I think of digital branding as like uh, the, if marketing is pushing the weights, then digital branding is like pulling. So you're trying to draw people in, again, focusing on relationship. Uh, and so there are calls to action. There are, you know, visuals. There are strong messages. But it's not just to get them to buy right away or to make a quick purchase decision. You're really trying to cultivate a relationship. So uh, if you think about that, that changes the message and then also changes the metrics. You're not just looking for, well, who clicked on the link and bought it, but more so, you know, who engage with the post, um, who signed up for the mailing list, indicating that they want you to continue to message and market to them. So, um, so everything is, is framed by this idea of cultivating a relationship with people uh, as opposed to just getting a, a sale. Um, so uh, community and conversation is the first thing that we'll talk about. And so, uh, you know, obviously in the digital space, there are tons of communities as well as, you know, real life uh, communities. And so what I found to be really helpful is uh, taking those offline communities and bringing that to the digital space. So, you know, Net 2.0 is a great example. It's something that exists in the real world, but there's also this online version um, that, exist and, and has become even more important uh, now because of the times that we're in. So there's, you know, the Facebook page aspect of it. And then there, there are these meetings, you know, it's, it's still happening, but it's obviously different. So, you know, there, there are other groups like that. Consider how you can um, tie into those groups that you may be already a part of a little bit more or find new ones that are going to be relevant for your business. And if, if one doesn't exist, create one. You know, it, it, there, that's happening all the time. I've seen an explosion of groups and, and people are oftentimes excited to, uh, to, to join them and take part in them. So if you are going to be part of a community, you know, you got to be an engaged member. So comment, share, contribute, and also do it with an idea toward, you know, what are your goals? Is it to, for more people to be aware of your brand? Is it to be seen as an influencer? Is it just to be seen as a, an authority figure uh, or a thought leader? You know, if you're going to be a part of it, optimize your profile. Typically, you, you have some kind of member profile. So just make sure that you take the time to fill that out as much as possible because people are looking for ways that they can find out more about you. And if it just has your name, but maybe no profile picture or 
you know, I can't get any more relevant information. That's a lost opportunity. So as we're spending more time on these communities, um, do yourself a favor and, and optimize your profiles there. You know, as I mentioned, there are different types of communities. What's really um, helpful for, you know, small businesses uh, like us in many cases is, is to be a part of the local groups. You know, you can identify with national and larger organizations that are personally meaningful to you, but what's really valuable is, is being a part of local groups because it, it shows people that you're there in the community, that you care about what's going on in the community, um, and that you, you have a presence. And so while your physical presence might not get as much traffic, uh, you can sort of latch into that uh, affiliation, you know, with, with the local organization. Um, and, and that can be beneficial in, in that, to that audience. So uh, others are, you know, guest blogging, appearing on podcasts or panel speaker, things like that. Uh, all that is helpful for thought leadership. Again, that's the, the visible and viable part of uh, the equation. So people see you and they see that you know what you're talking about. You're an expert in your space. Um, and then also there's a lot of uh, mastermind and accountability type groups. So this sort of industry specific. Um, I know that I'm part of one for like digital marketers and uh, it's been great because they bring, you know, information that I wouldn't get otherwise. And we're able to sort of share um, how to's and best practices. So these are all different types of communities that you can be a part of and leverage and gain influence in. So there's internal um, as well as, as external. And uh, as you're you know, doing that, think about ways that you can sort of promote that to people, maybe your email signature or, um, you know, we don't have business cards per se, but what are other ways that you can shine light on these groups that you're a part of that are adding value uh, to your business and will also add value to your customers? Right? And then conversations, uh, engage in conversations. Uh, and then eventually you can start conversations, but think about, you know, things that are hot button issues of the day, like, you know, how people feel about reopening uh, or, or things like diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, there, there are these big high level conversations that are happening that you can choose or not choose to take part in. Um, but they're the things that people are thinking about and talking about. And so what can you, what value can you add from your um, perspective on those things? Um, there are those conversations that are happening inside your organization or inside your industry? You know, how can you add um, your voice to that? There are these external conversations that are, again, just things that people are, are interested in in general. You know, how can you speak to that? Um, and then talk to your customers. Use surveys and feedback tools. Um, what I think this time has taught us all the value of is really just listening and uh, and finding out what's important to people and then as you find out what's important to your customers you can use digital tools to uh, create messaging around that um, and just make sure that you are obviously doing your your you know typical service offerings but but maybe adding more value it's, it's just important to know uh, what people think and feel and make sure that we are are speaking to that um, because that's going to create something else that's important, um, which is connection. So we're going to talk about content and connection, uh, which is the next step of things that you can do to enhance and expand your digital brand. So, uh, so build your, your content house. Um, every business is like a content producer, um, whether you want to be or not, like you should be creating content and what what this time has taught us is that it can't just be content that's created once and just sort of sits there like it has to be built and then maintained and managed and um, this is what people expect you know we think about some of the different entertainment uh, that people mention you know well let's say that the content that was on Netflix in March is the same that was on on Netflix right now like you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be watching it. Like people have um, this appetite for, for content. And so whether we want to consume it 
uh, or, or, you know, sort of manage it or not, like we, we kind of have to. And so it's helpful for you to think about your organization as, um, yes, you do whatever service or product, you know, you sell or service you provide, but you also have to produce content around that. And um, people, audiences have come to expect that. So um, there's gonna be different content for people at different stages uh, of the relationship, you know, with your brand. There's content that's really great for people that are first getting introduced to who you are and what you do. And then there's content that is for people who are further along and you know they know about you they've done their own research and and they're closer to a buying decision so what content is appropriate for them it's important to kind of think through all of that and so one thing that i recommend is is uh using some type of content planner to figure out how you're going to repurpose and repackage your content and a great you know rule of thumb or or uh, suggestion is uh, to think through okay what are three ways that i can use this content that I'm creating you know some of us will be able to produce a piece of content every week for some people it might be one great piece of content every month maybe a video blog what have you but think about three different ways that you can use that content uh, repurposing and repackaging is the name of the game uh, in terms of, of digital brand and, and you know think about why people need to see the same message perhaps two to three times you know we we are inundated with content and messages and so there's nothing wrong with you know telling them telling them again and telling them that you told them so um, think about how whatever you can create uh, you can use in at least three different ways that's sort of a, a good rule of thumb um, and uh, along with that is is storytelling so think about engaging inventive brand stories that resonate uh, with people and you know we're um why are we why are we looking at so much entertainment you know we we want to we want to connect with a story uh you know we, we we want to be taken to a place outside of our everyday reality of maybe being in the house all the time so uh, people are looking for that type of content things that are going to speak to uh maybe where they are where the market is uh, so storytelling is is not going to go away. It's even more important. It was important before, but it's even more important now. Um, and you know, as I mentioned, it should not always be focused on selling. Um, you know, maybe twenty five percent of it is on selling. But uh, you're really again in a relationship. You're trying to get to know the person on the other side, and you want them to know you really well. Um, I think Kathy mentioned earlier about know, like, and trust. You know, that, that applies, uh, especially in the digital setting when, you know, I, my ability to know you and like you and trust you is, is challenged by the fact that we're, we're looking at each other through, through screens and devices. But uh, you can convince and compel people uh, through the stories that you tell. And video and podcasts are, are two important ways to do that. Um, they're not the only ways, but because we are looking for things to listen to and things to look at. Um, they're two of the most powerful ways out there. So your content plan, your, your strategy uh, is, is helpful for doing that. So I wanna just share a personal example. I don't wanna brag, but it's, um, you know, this is, uh, this just happened last week. So I, I shared a story about how um, you know, I got laid off like 11 years ago last Monday and, um, you know, how that sort of set me on this journey to entrepreneurship and where I am now. And, you know, I know that this type of content does well on LinkedIn, um, but, you know, I had no idea that it would be as popular or, you know, it, it would go as far as it did. And so this is from last night. You know, I just pulled this screenshot and, you know, you look at the amount of comments, uh, reactions, and, and then views, you know, I'm blown away by these numbers and it, they've gone up since last night. And, and I don't say that to say that I'm, you know, the content master or anything, but I decided to share a story about something that, you know, wasn't the most easy thing to, to talk about, 
Um, but I related that from then to now and how, you know, what I learned from the journey. And so, you know, people just responded to it because it resonates with people. So I think that, um, you know, for me, it's a great case study. And when you, when you share just about who you are, where you are in your business and really try to create content that engages people in conversation that is important to them, they respond to it. So, um, so that was a great lesson for me. And just along the lines of storytelling, you know, make it, make it easy uh, for people to ask, get their questions answered. Um, and all of these are ways to sort of start getting, you know, that information uh, for people to figure out what's important to them um, so you can tell stories that resonate. Uh, and about connection, you know, 50% of people will visit your website after reading a review. So reviews and, and the way that you show up online are, are hugely important. Um, and again, this sort of talks about those things that are important for uh, once people get to your website, like questions, comments, you know, make it easy for them to get their questions asked. You want to position yourself as a problem solver. And so um, knowing that if they read a positive review and hopefully you have a number of them out there and have spent time trying to collect those and asking your, your clients and customers for those, um, hopefully you have a nice collection of those after people read those positive reviews and they go to your website, can they quickly get in touch with you and get answers to their questions? So the last one um, is consistency. Uh, I love my alliteration. So we're on our last C. So alignment and appearance. Uh, and so this is just making sure that what people see, what they hear is the same on all the different channels. So um, that you, you know, have the same services, that you have the same message, that you look and sound like everything came from the same place. So um, think about, you know, again, like a person, how confusing would it be if, you know, a person sort of talked to you a certain way on the phone uh, and they meet you in person and they, they have a completely different demeanor and they, they are, you know, you just have a wonderful phone conversation, but you meet them in person and they're rude and they're short and, you know, it's, it's completely different. So that throws people off. You know, what, what helps people want to engage with your brand more is that sense of connection that's created by being consistent. So take time to think about um, the way you talk about your products and services and also uh, how you appear visually. Um, invest in, in how you appear. And that, that goes back to that idea of reviews and, and recommendations and all those things. Uh, what's really valuable for, for consumers is not what you say about yourself, but what others say about you. So that, you know, that speaks to, hey, Christina is viable. You know, um, you do the part of being visible, but if it's all just me saying how great I am, what's a lot more valuable as a consumer is that your customers, you know, say over and over again that you're, you're great and that I should work with you. That's going to be a lot more compelling. That's going to demonstrate how valuable you are. Uh, and so 23% uh, consistent branding across all channels increases revenue by 23%. And we, we all would like to increase our revenue. So um, showing up the same on all the different channels is important. And this demonstrates why um, it's important. You know, if you think about how it takes five to seven impressions uh, for people to really remember you, you wanna give them five to seven different impressions or five to seven consistent positive impressions. So every time they think about you, they, they've seen you and heard of you in a positive setting, um, you're much more likely to be able to engage that person with your brand in a, in a positive way because they're, they're going to come into it knowing that, you know, you're visible. I've seen you. I've heard about you, um, but also that you're viable. I, I have seen you. Uh, I, I've seen others, you know, testify to how uh, good you are at what you do and the fact that I know you can solve my problems. So, um, so yeah, a strong uh, visual brand 
helps you to uh, be able to swim in the deep end, um, much like this guy right here. So, you know, we're, we're all trying to uh, recover at, at some level. Um, all of our businesses have been affected by this, uh, you know, COVID situation and, and just uh, the toll that that's taken, but uh, setting up, you know, our digital brand, our systems and the channels that we want and having a strong uh, understanding of why we're doing it really helps us to be able to swim uh, in these waters that are uh, not as clear as the water in this pool. You know, we're, we're all trying to get through it, um, but a strong digital plan helps us to, um, to be confident that we're gonna get there. So again, uh, this is all about relationship and helping people understand that you're visible, viable, and valuable. So that's it. Uh, please reach out. And we do offer 30-minute uh, brand consultations for anybody that's interested. No cost, no obligation on that. Uh, we just like to talk to people about where they are and where they want to get to. So thanks so much, guys. Okay. Let's open this back up. There we go. All right. Any questions, comments? That was amazing. Um, go ahead, Mary. <laughs>